Louis Philipp Locke, you are here in the audience. Thank you for coming to München, the European Adventure of the Year. Congratulations, I give you a microphone and we talk a little bit. This is the guy, I can touch him. Uh, we had a few phone calls. Congratulations. Thank you. And you did it, and you did something in 2016 which was nominated, which was awarded now. How do you feel? Uh, it feels great, especially when you are like, like the next one after the, 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 the people we, we've seen before, from Simone to, uh, uh, to Freya that I've met uh, myself, so very impressive people. You are from Belgium? Yes. It's a huge adventure com a country? Not really. No? You're the only one? Uh, we might be five or six. A lot yeah. are good in climbing. They won the Pioli d'Or a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But in my area of deserts and kayaking, I'm, I'm the only one. So tell us about the adventure. For us and for the jury, it was about planning. It was the idea. What was your idea in the beginning, what you said? I would like to do 2016. So I've done a few deserts, mainly in Australia. And the idea was that after all this experience, I wanted to go on the uh, the three most extreme deserts on the planet that are kind of small and push the limits of human endurance and, and some pain also uh, to see how far we could go into the deserts and attempting to cross them completely on foot on my own in the sim simplest way possible which is basically I carried of course a tent to sleeping bag to camp at night because it's freezing and of course all my water because there is no water in these deserts some food and the way to make it was uh, I had to push the limits very, very far actually. So, so how long before did you plan your trip? So uh, the idea was to cross these three deserts. That valley took uh, four months to prepare for an expedition of only eight days. Uh, the Simpson Desert took about uh, three months to prepare, but I, it was the second time uh, I've been into that desert. And Bolivia, the, the salt flats, the most famous is Uyuni. Uh, there I made an attempt in 2013, I completely failed, I did, not that completely, I did two-thirds of the distance, but the last third is more than 50% of the effort, and uh, at that time I said I'm going to try again uh, one day, and actually this failure made me understand uh, my mistakes that I could use to succeed in the, the crossing of these three deserts. So it's. It's more about planning, actually, than the physical stability of your genes or of your body. Well, of course, there's a lot of planning and experience. I'm not a special athlete at all. I only train like three, four weeks in advance. Uh, after work, uh, I take a pack of 25 kilograms and I walk. And my only idea in, in preparation and the training, the physical part, is to avoid injury. Because for these deserts, the idea was to carry a lot of weight only with a backpack. I was not holding a cart behind me. In that valley I started with uh, 46 kilograms. In the Simpson Desert, uh, hold on your seat, I started with a pack of 61 kilograms with 40 liters of water, which is immense, which is more than 80% of my own body weight. And in the Salars of Uyuni, I started with uh, 42, uh, which is less, but you have the altitude which makes it uh, hard. So that's for the map of the valley. So first crossing from north to south. Um, it was the third attempt. An American had made two attempts before. Uh, to reduce the weight and comfort, I took no stove. I only ate cold during the day and only snack bars because I could eat while walking. Uh, that's uh, not a standstorm, but uh, the storm I had in that valley. And you have to understand that uh, Dead Valley is composed of dif different terrains from rocky terrain, dust, hard ground, sands, uh, washouts of rivers. Uh, I had the luck that uh, there was a, a fast flooding uh, three weeks before I arrived that completely killed uh, all the scorpions. So I saw zero scorpions where I should have been seeing three or four per day. That's uh, Australia where I did the Simpson. So one of the reasons I could make it is that I pushed the limits of salt consumption, sometimes above the deadly, uh, the deadly density of water. So here, I'm, these are not my balls, right? These are two massive bladders of six liters each, so totally 61 kilograms on me. Uh, to avoid being too hot with a, a net, I don't carry a net uh, in the Simpsons, so you have the flies 
coming onto you, they end with about 200 on you uh, at the end of the day, uh, around 15 to 20 on your face the whole day for 15 hours. The idea is that I have to walk very slowly actually, but still fast enough. Obviously with that weight you cannot do five kilometers an hour. The idea is to avoid sweating as maximum. And it's like a car with consumption with petrol. My petrol is water. So the, the idea is to maximize the distance I can do with uh, per liter, let's say. And that's why you avoid sweating by uh, having a lot of salt in your body, but not too much. Uh, in that valley, I nearly collapsed because of overheating. Uh, I had too much salt in me and I could not evacuate. It took four hours of almost uh, standing still to start to decrease my body temperature and avoiding getting delirious and dying. In Uyuni, some of you have been there, uh, the only way to get a bit of uh, at midday to get a bit of uh, shade is to, to go in, under your pack. Uh, but beautiful landscapes and you have two suns, so the average temperature is about 25 during midday. But with the sun, you have a feeling of uh, around 40 degrees. Uh, it's, it's really like this, you have to get good gear, white, beige clothes, good uh, glasses, uh, put three, four times per day uh, sunblock, because you'll get burned to the second degree on your skin. Uh, after two minutes only uh, at midday. Uh, that's between the two salars, there's a small mountain pass with some villages. Uh, I'm still the, the first person to walk across this uh, mountainous part. Um, and of course all these uh, expeditions are world first. No one had attempted it before except myself, this one in 2013. And, and, other. and I was not completely alone, there was a, a Belgian fellow, some of you know him. But he's only 10 centimeters small. That's the only luxury I have with the toilet paper. And of course with the abrasion on the back because of the weight. Uh, all day with uh, some sweat. It's uh, sandpaper on your back. It's, it's a bit painful. Um, and these are kind of clean feet. That's kind of okay. The, the feet don't suffer too much. But they suffer, they suffer more inside. Because when you have your foot with all the weight on one of your foot, like when I'm like this on my foot, I have 75 kilos on one foot, plus 60 kilograms at the start in the Simpson Desert. I have more than 130 kilograms on one foot, so I completely remove all the blood out of my feet. And then when I lift it back, it goes back in there. And this pumping movement makes it very painful because it's like a heart beating in your feet. And your feet is not used to that and it gets swollen and small all day and super painful. Basically, it's about how long can you sustain the pain. Oh, the micro, yeah. How long can you sustain the pain uh, in this desert? Also, another example, when you have that weight on your shoulders, my maximum uh, pain that I could have is to carry the pack for like an hour. After an hour, the pain was too intense and also it was cutting the blood in my shoulders. So uh, often it happened that I wanted to push with my stick and I couldn't, I had no power because the, the blood was not coming to my arm. So I had to rest for five minutes and then start again. And you do this all alone, is it a little bit dangerous? If something happens, no one can rescue? Uh, it's quite dangerous, don't cross the desert at home, but that's, that's cool, <laughs> in Europe there's not many deserts. Um, yeah, of course there are deadly snakes, uh, especially in Australia, if you get bitten, basically rescue in the Simpson Desert. Uh, is one week with a car. There's no helicopter who can come. They don't have enough gasoline to come and get you back. So if you get bitten, if you break your leg, you have to wait one week. You might, you might have a decision that you want to cut it, but lucky for me, I, I, never, I, don't, I don't want to have this uh, thinking anymore. Um, wild animals, camels, can be very dangerous. Uh, dingoes, these are wild dogs. Scorpions in that valley, rattlesnakes, I, I've seen only one, that's okay. Um, and then of course the weather, the, the biggest problem is actually yourself uh, with the sun and you have to deal with the sun and the water. The, the, the most dangerous thing in a desert is yourself, you have to know yourself and that's my experience. What would I do if I would walk through three desert? Would I have a Walkman with me or an iPhone with some music? What kind of music? Would I talk? Would I whatever, hear a book? What did you do? Uh, I don't take any sound or music with me uh, for two reasons. The first reason is that I want to keep alert in this level of, of silence even if I hear the sound of the wind or my footsteps in the sound. Um, the level of 
uh, audio that my ear comes becomes so animal that I can hear very well after a few days and it could help to hear anything from an animal from behind me or listen to your body. Secondly, I've heard of some explorers, especially in polar treks, they had their, their walk, their iPod or whatever, and they listen to the music and usually they put the music louder when they have to push harder and suddenly the airport breaks because it's too cold or the battery dies or whatever. And then they are completely in shock and this shock you don't want to have it in a desert because it might turn you completely crazy. So to be not crazy, well I might actually perhaps a little bit crazy to be in deserts, um, you, I, avoid, I avoid that. Thank you.